All right. Uh, guys, it's a real goblin sort of day today. You ever have like a goblin day? Today was a goblin day for me, like a real one. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I nothing. I didn't. I didn't do a damn thing. I didn't do homework. I only checked in Discord a little bit. I didn't check anything else. I watched Slay the Spire content. I watched reviews of the 4090. That was interesting. No, no hentai. I didn't watch any anime. I've been watching, um, I've been watching Columbo. And I really like it. I didn't, so it's not the 4090 that's melting. It's apparently the 4090 Ti that was in development. That they don't know how to cool it or it takes so much power there's no reasonable way to cool it. Watching Columbo is nursing home behavior. Okay, so to be fair, yes, the first episode of Columbo was released, what is it, like 1968? Something like that, 1969. But it was directed by Steven Spielberg. The camera quality and everything else like that is, is nearly on par outside of the fact that it's four by three. And the first episode, they do treat you like an idiot. They, they there's a scene that they do not include. Badge, please. All right, hold on. I was gonna. All right, let me do a little bit of live research. Hold on. Uh, there's a scene they cut from later episodes, which is like what would normally be the parlor room scene, which would be necessary in like most mystery novels and stuff like that. Um. But you just, you don't need it, because it's like, it's only an hour. Like, if you couldn't figure it out, as it was literally, like, directly explained across the board, then, um, that's like a you problem. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a them problem. Are you also taping them from cable TV on DVHS? Uh, I watch them on Peacock, which is like the Xfinity streaming service. And they run ads like every 15 minutes, but it's only 45 seconds and I'm able to alt tab out. No, I actually, I, I saw, I've been watching some Baylor Lord. I really like his overlay and I, I'm very interested in finding out um, who he used because I, I really like it. He's, he's streaming live right now. If he's still on later on, we'll, um, he might rate him. I might ask him. Um, Cock, we're gonna get cock on Friday, maybe Thursday. I don't know when the cock game's coming. So, hold on. I have an iPad I watch content on, and it's kind of in a four by three aspect ratio, so it's not even that bad to watch four by three cock cock game. Uh, Dragon Ball Breakers. Did you get the Wild Hearts demo? No. No, no, Cam Moss, it's, it, it's pro, I mean, I'm never going to stop you from asking, but just so you're aware, I, it's not never, but I pretty much never get early access to anything. <laughs> At best, a day ahead of the full release. In terms of like full on early access, the best that I ever had was, I got like a, a month early access to the PC Rise version, which could have been a thing, but I mean, the game had already been out on the Switch. It wasn't like there was gonna be like new content. Where am I from? I am from NA and like, the funny thing, the funny thing is like, I'm so like careful and strict to never break any NDAs ever. Like I, I, I'm actually, I'm afraid sometimes even to say 
that I have early access or will get early access or have something to show, even if it's like only an hour or two away, because like I don't want to break any part of the NDA. And yet, like, there's all these creators, like, the second they get whiff of everything, they're just, like, fire hosing content all over the internet. I'm the most monster dude ever. What is wrong with these guys? It's... It's probably an NA thing. Um... Would I break the NDA for you? I would break the NDA for no one. Okay? No one. I'm in the blacklist. Hex never forgets. I got early access to Rise PC. We don't even know that Hex is still in active development with Monster Hunter. The last time uh, I checked in on Hex, he was talking to me about how he was retiring early off of his crypto gains. I mean, maybe he still works. I mean, if he didn't cash out, he's probably going to have to work. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Have I put out Halloween decorations? My brother, what, do I look like the sort of guy that puts out Halloween decorations? My house is already thought of as being the haunted house in the neighborhood. No, I mean, I, I, I wish no ill. To be very clear, I wish no ill for like any one individual person for getting sucked into crypto. Like, I, I obviously on an individual level, like you don't, you wouldn't want suffering on anyone. Um... Hex probably had Bitcoin from like 2000, yeah, 2010 or 2008. Um, but man, I'm I glad it died. You know, just wasting electricity and graphics cards. You like the pumpkin jacket hoodie? I, I think I wore this yesterday. Goblin day today. Um. So yeah. Got, didn't do much. Watch Columbo, old man show, but it is good. I recommend it. Camelosk, thank you. For six months. Peter Falk is just a joy to watch. He's an old man. Older man in the show. Plays a apparently bumbling, incompetent cop who's actually incredibly observant and a genius. I like that. I respect it. So... Apparently, Columbo is one of the first uh, American shows that was uh, translated and syndicated in Japan. Um, let me see if I can get a thing up here. And so in Japan, they, they apparently like really like... Where do you fall in his wife existing? I've watched three episodes and I could already say she 100% does not exist. <laughs> There's like no way. That is not a married man. That is a man who is only driven by the passion of uh, discovering the truth. So yeah, that's uh, Katakana. They put it on the side there. Koronbo. This is like, this is just a joke, obviously. Like, he's not, he's not actually in Final Fantasy X. 168 centimeters? He looks pretty short in the show. I don't know what that is in uh, Freedom Units. Five foot six? That's about right. Final he, he looks to be about five six five foot six inside the um, inside the show. Below average height depends on the country. That would be very average in Japan. Very below average in modern United States and borderline circus freak on dating apps. <laughs> Apparently. Show how old? Uh, does it say? Birthday is every year. I don't know how old Peter Falk is. He looked to be between maybe early 40s and 60s. So I think he went until he was about 70. All I'm going to say is just because it's an old show, don't write it off. 
It's very enjoyable. If you like mysteries and you don't like the modern, like, super creepo NCIS stuff that gets crapped out nowadays, which I am not a fan of at all. So, you know, the weird thing about Columbo is I don't even think there's that many episodes. I think there's less than a hundred episodes, but they're they're long. They're like they're like a they're like an hour long. Yeah, they're between 73 and 98 minutes. 69 episodes. Nice. I was actually trying to figure out if like I could watch Columbo on stream. I don't really know what like for a show that's released in 1972. Is that 50 years old? Um I don't I don't know what like that copyright is, but I would I would love to have an on-stream watch party of Columbo. But well, well there's definitely I mean there might be some old movies that are okay. It's so difficult. Fair use is any no, no, no. I mean, it's it, there's some pretty strict laws about re-broadcasting stuff that was put on TV. Certainly less scary to re-broadcast this than stuff that was coming out within the last year, like the Twitch meta that was earlier. His promised watch party says, like you promised whole." I don't know. Very, very interesting thing about Columbo. Episode one, um, a central part of the murder involved calling from landlines, particularly using an operator to call from landlines or calling collect to call from landlines and then tracking those calls. Which, like, I wonder, like, if you're, like, a Zoomer watching that now, like, I'm sure you would get it. But, like, have they ever had to do that before? <laughs> ever. You know, if you're, if you're 20 years old now, like, 2002, they still had landlines and used them pretty regularly. I guess in a lot of places, they still have them. But the funny part is one guy takes another guy to like another city, like far away from their hometown. And the guy knows his phone number, but he doesn't know the area code and like, oh, oh your area code is this. <laughs> He's like, use the area code to dial to another area. <laughs> but then in the next episode, somebody has a car phone. And like, that's obviously like high tech for that point. I would assume people know less about car phones now than would know about landlines because car phones like that is a very like niche thing. I remember being with my dad once as he was looking at buying a car and the salesman describing to him that he could put a lockout code on there so that my brother and I could not use the phone to accidentally call China, which I could only assume would have cost him like $10 a minute. <laughs> a car phone in a bag? I, some of the original ones were in a bag, right? But I distinctly remember him having that conversation with a car salesman. I don't think he got the car. He was pretty cheap when it came to cars. And so am I. Definitely got that from him. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, no, I don't think so. No. His later years became less about committing faster crimes and more about committing lazier crimes. Right? Def cheap. It's called frugality. Okay? Frugal is not cheap. Spent 13900 in a car two hours ago? That's a reasonable price for a New used car, right? Nah, he's a mega scammer. 
Scam Lord, my dad. One of the best scammers. 2018 Chevy Trax. I don't know what a Trax is. Check pay phones for leftover coins. Oh, that's a nice car. That seems reasonable. Is it a hybrid at all? I'm trying to find out. Doesn't look like. It. Still, 30 highway is not the worst. Scam the new badges. I'm working on it, okay? It's gonna happen. Before the heat death of the universe, as I as I commonly say. Um. All right, this is probably gonna be, if not the last, like maybe the second to last rise stream in a while. I'm having a hard time. I am having a hard time getting through title update two, and I can't exactly pinpoint it. It just feels like swimming through quicksand or something. I don't, I don't even know what it is. But it, it feel it feels like eating like a never-ending bowl of ice cream. Like it's cool in the beginning, but by the end, you're in actual hell. You have a headache. Your mouth is cold. I'm finally coming to my senses. If I have one mild goal, okay. I, I, I mean, Jesus Christ, would I even do this off stream? Maybe, I guess. I gotta, I gotta stream 30 minutes on Discord. Is I would like to get 120 and get like Pyrachnikadachi up to 120. And I think that's it. I, I really can't even be asked to do anything else. You have four pages of maxed 120 solo? I mean, it's a fun game. It's just as a, um, as a content creator, I just don't know that there's anything interesting to do. Do you think the addition of lobby bosses would have helped how World had Safi and Kolv? The addition of bosses that were extremely difficult, necessitating an active strategy or a very good player or cooperation would help. You don't necessarily need the equivalent of a Kolv or Safi necessarily that requires multiple repels. Make it exciting for us. Use the I'm melting away sets and no goo and no dogs. I will run dereliction today. How's that sound? I'm realizing hacking might be the way. At what point did I say hacking was the solution? You're the cheater. <laughs> no, I mean, I just... I'll have to play maybe a little bit more when Title Update 3 comes out. That's pretty much it. You know? It, it would actually be more fun not to stream it and maybe just play it a little bit off stream on the Steam Deck or something periodically. Like, I've got, um... I got some friends I might hang out with next weekend. But like, here's the reality. I don't know if any of them have a Steam Deck and to the ones that do, who even have an Endgame Rise character and to the ones that do, who's above AR 100? Right? <laughs> Do they even play Monster Hunter? Yeah, they all play Monster Hunter. They all play it and they all love it. No Monster Hunter based challenge on deck. I'm not sure what I know what that means. Was title update one Sunbreak's Peak? Yeah, I think so. I mean, for now. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Like, I'm thinking exactly of Omni Toad. We might be there hanging out both, both with the Steam Deck, and I might be like, hey, do you want to play Rise? And he would probably pull it out and be like MR13 or something. 
all monster, all credits. The next challenge, uh, depending on when title update three comes out, will either be November or December. January at the latest. All monsters is legitimately either marathon crap my pants content or like a year long process. And we are not at that point in the re release cycles where I need to do that. No. Uh, maybe getting high is cool. That's a shorter one. That's only like two weeks. I could do a getting high maybe in November or December. Um... That's that's pretty much all 140 Apex Challenge when? You know the annoying thing about that? Like, obviously, like, yeah, that'd be fun and good content. But, like, you, I live in this existence where I would love to do multiplayer on it. My capture 3DS is super unreliable and emulated is super annoying. Getting high? Yes. Uh, that's where I take um, psychedelic mushrooms and try to complete as many quests as possible in one stream without, like, freaking out. I mean, um, only high rank gear in master rank or G rank. Might be good in... for you? Probably not GU, might be kinda hard. Uh, but I think it's actually perfect for world. It's really perfect, um, because you can even go up to Fatalis. It's really hard to beat Fatalis with all high rank gear, but it's possible. I did it with Insect Lave. I got like this close with Hammer. What share is this? It's nothing special. I can see if I can find it, but I, I don't think I'm going to have it. Mm. Is this it? Why is, like, Google, the one company known about its ability to search things so bad at searching through your, <laughs> your search history? Uh... Why, well, yes, Google, when I look for office chair, I want you to send me highlighted the overstock.com email from October 4th. I'm so sorry. It's nothing special. It's not like a Herman Cardin or anything like that. I, I mean, it's it's seriously like it was just like a semi-adjustable office chair. I think I might have gotten it from Staples. Hold on, let me put Staples. I mean, they're almost even worse. They send an email every day. <laughs> uh! I'm sorry. It might have been from Staples. Full Dragon against AT Volcana. I mean, it's definitely possible, but I wouldn't want to do it with anything other than Insect Lave. Yeah, no, I mean, it, 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 it seriously, I, I don't want to, I don't want you to think it's anything super special. I mean, it's got lumbar support, which is kind of nice. Everything else is adjustable. I'm still thinking about getting a real big boy standing desk at some point, but I just haven't done it yet. Getting low in master rank. The issue with getting low in master rank is you would be very tempted to do all sorts of slinger burst, um, wall bang shenanigans just to get through the quests, and that wouldn't be that much different. Um, and... <laughs> The all red sharpness challenge, which is like a cursed challenge. <laughs> I will never do anything like that again. Not worth it. Not worth it. Getting high, though, is perfect because... Did I even use defender gear? I don't think I did. Doesn't stop you from being a goobly in Rise. It's different in Rise. Rise is barely a game. It exists. Okay. Well, we should probably... Alright, we'll play it. Final shout out. Check out Columbo. Really fun show. I'm probably going to watch another episode tonight. Getting high rank and G rank for you? 
So the funny thing about getting high in G rank for you is like your first, if not two star levels are basically the same. The, the challenge, and maybe I would need somebody to like help me um, strategize would be figuring out how to beat Gog. Fortify Insect Glaive? But that feels like cheating. Like, can you beat him? Kanta did it? Kinsect only? Well, I'm sure that was a G rank Kinsect, though. And Kinsect's actually good for you, isn't he? Can't they can do it? I can? On a good day? I'm about as good on Kanta on an average day. <laughs> Kanta on a good day? He's on another level. But I mean, he's, he's a lot more patient than I am. Excuse me. How many... How many NA championships do you have? Huh? I have 1.0. Almost got to. Fourth place in the world. That's not that bad. It's the last time Kanta played Monster. He's been playing a lot of Genshin lately. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean... Dead game. How many runs did he post online? I mean, he, he, he really puts in the patience. Like, I love a finished Kanta run because they have a certain level of like cleanliness to them that you don't see in a lot of other runs. You know, some people play super tweakers. I'm kind of a tweakers player, I'll admit it. Uh, his runs are very like clean and methodical. I like that. You have a recorded instance of being a TV ad and killing someone's TV? I'm not ashamed of that. I'm proud of that. There is a new gotcha game coming out uh, by MiHoYo. What is that? Like the cyberpunk TV one? I, like, I have this con conflict where I don't necessarily want to promote gotcha games too much. I I've got some ethical concerns about them. But then simultaneously, I like upsetting the people that for some reason get really upset when you do play a gotcha game. <laughs> Is that weird? What is, I mean, what is that? I don't want to support... I don't want to support the gotcha, but I want to really piss off the people that are like, You paid $10 for what?! <laughs> It's on brand for me? Just full goblin mode? Thank you, I respect that. I think it is on brand for me. It, what, what the hell was that game? What is that game? Somebody say it! <laughs> what is this game? Is this booby? <laughs> what is this game? What is that? Hold on. Hold on. What is this? I've never seen this before. Hold on. Hold on. This doesn't look like a. this could possibly be a gotcha game. What is it? Hold on. Where's my camera? Hold on. God damn it. Ah! I forgot I did this. I was doing that yesterday. During the replay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to fix it. I'm fixing it now. I'm going to blow you. I'm going to blow you. I'm going to blow you. Okay, hold I'm on. going to blow you. I'm going to blow you. I'm going to blow you. Hold on.
I know. All right, hold on. All right, there we go. What is this? It looks like. 健康数据的追查有结果了吗？破译进度百分之五十二，有效时间。金钱换时间，不就是他们 ？There was a time I would be able to kind of understand this. 补偿，黄雀在后。What is it? 等着看我大显身手吧。如果再不抓紧调查，这条线索可能会彻底断掉。It's like a mystery game. 想维持平衡，或许需要一些额外的助力。我是不会让任何危险靠近你的。What is What is the gameplay loop? 放心，接下来的事情交给我就好。看来对于我的邀请，你已经有答案。Do you You get like detectives to romance you? 你别走。How is this a video game? What's the game? It's not Mihoyo. Why are you done? Hello. Do you get a stamina meter? How often you get boned? Why is it like? There's a lot of people talking at once. Mihoyo, fix your website. It's not even out yet. It's a, it's a, is it a gotcha visual novel? That's, is that you? And then you've got these guys you date. It came out in 2020. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know. I don't know what I'm. I don't know what we're looking at. Play it. <laughs> I'm not trying to study Chinese. Uh, it's probably got a Japanese translation, honestly. Where is the game? How come none of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Zenless Zone Zero. I might play this game. Hold on. I would consider it. It's apparently difficult. I'm thinking about it. People leave, don't you like gotcha, Gator? I forget. Don't you like Genshin? Bring back cozy YouTube streams? If I wasn't studying Japanese, I probably wouldn't. You hate Genshin? Oh, okay. Their website is broken. That's in Japanese. The, the worst part about the gacha games, though, is like, it suddenly feels like you have chores again. Like, I know some people like that. Like, oh, you always have something to do. I hate it. I don't want chores. I don't, I don't want them. Like, I just want to play the game when I want to play the game. I don't want to feel like I'm a little, like a little pet who's got to do like little, little circus tricks. I do like check marks. I do, but at a certain point, it does get overwhelming. And especially daily. No way. Yeah, no, it's like, seriously? Just, like, you may as well set up a little barn, get strapped to a table, and just get milked by them. Just pump your body of fluids. And then every once in a while, they give you like a little candy, like a little treat. That's what it's like playing these games. <laughs> like the combat looks like, okay. It like looks acceptable, probably. Oh, 
どの方向に行けばいいんだ I don't know. The animations look okay. They showed the gameplay, they showed them doing combos and stuff. If I could get milked regularly, you'd be down how much? Like, you would pay? That's the thing. See, like, that's the little pay pig of the human gamer condition nowadays. You will pay for someone for the, the right for someone to milk you. It's screwed up, man. It should be the other way around. I want to pay to get your milk and drink. <laughs> Wait. What? <laughs> when I milk you for free. I get, I feel like this analogy is breaking down a little bit. <laughs> is this, does this make any sense? What am I trying to say? I want to play the video game. <laughs> and I don't want it to be like a chore. And I don't want to pay for the opportunity for you to milk me more. A milk, milk for milk? <laughs> so I give you milk and you give me milk? I mean, that sounds like just milking yourself for extra steps, but I mean, I <laughs> maybe, I guess? I got... <laughs> I got 2% if you got whole? 1%? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I might play that game. I don't know. Like I said, I don't like gotcha. I don't like supporting gotcha. But at the same time, I like upsetting people that hate gotcha. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's a possibility. I don't even know what's going to come out. Some people I know got early access to a beta. So like soon, probably. Let's play Genshin instead. I know there's a lot of people out there that still really like Genshin, but like. Knowing that the general end game is grinding artifacts to be able to clear the abyss faster just isn't like it's just not for me. And I know like the entire other game, I think, is all just like abyss grinding, anyways. So I don't know like one is better than the other. How does anyone still like Genshin? Well, a lot of it is probably sunk cost. Sunk cost fallacy. Uh the other part, I mean, they add new content. You know? Genshin has um, a regular monthly, if not sometimes weekly updates. So you always have something new coming in. You know, it's the opposite of War uh, Rise, where it's like every week you get to do a quest and you get a gesture you'll never use. I misunderstand entirely if you think Abyss is what we're playing for. The, the story is actually okay. The music's nice. The combat's acceptable. Genshin is literally power creep the game. I mean, you, you get resin to grind artifacts to make characters slightly more powerful. Once you're done leveling them. Do the Aranara quest? I mean, apparently I could transfer the save to PC or PlayStation now, which I guess is a good thing. What is it? 40 minutes? Is it time for me to play the game? All right, I'll play the game. I'll play it. I don't really want to. I have to. The barn milking plan? <laughs> Man, I watched more footage on the Twitch slash Lenovo uh, paralysis hole. And it's like really upsetting, man. Like, it's upsetting. How was my class today? Uh, there was no class today. Class is tomorrow. I, today was a goblin day. I didn't do anything today. I do have to do homework tonight. I didn't do it all weekend. I had all weekend to do it, and I didn't do it. The Twitch comment? At TwitchCon 2022, Lenovo, in conjunction with Twitch, set up a foam pit with these little platforms for you to do like foam noodle battles on. Like hit each other with the foam noodles. The issue was they had like a single layer of foam block 
on top of a thin foam pad on top of concrete. So if you landed just right, you would... What the hell? There's like noises outside. You would miss the foam a little bit, hit the thin foam pad, and one, one poor girl like basically broke her ass. I mean, she broke her coccyx. Uh, maybe even broke like twice, so. Is that on the venue more on Twitch? I would say it's on the person running the booth because it was negligent. You know? I think the girl that broke her coccyx is the one that broke it in two places. Lenovo is boned? Well, I can't imagine they're going to be running any more booths for a while at conventions. So there's a difference when you sign a waiver, right? So like, let's say I run a bungee jumping uh, operation and I have you sign a waiver to go bungee jumping saying like, if you jump with the bungee jumping and you get injured by like whiplash or something that I'm not liable. But then you, you jump with the bungee and it snaps because I did not maintain the jump bungee cord and you fall onto a rock and you're paralyzed. That was negligence on me for not maintaining the, the equipment well. So, you know, legally, if you can go to court and like, I'm not a lawyer, but if you can determine that there was a party involved that caused you injury and in the United States, even they were 1% negligent, I mean, generally, like, damages can be awarded, you know? I'm not a lawyer. Because the, the, so the case, there was a very interesting case where somebody was, like, trying to, like, test the boundaries of what the U.S. court system wanted negligence for. And there was some guy, like, riding on the back of someone's car. And the other driver was driving too fast and the guy fell off or something like that. And the guy that was on the back that said, oh, he was driving too fast. Like, well, you were on the back of the car in the first place. You were negligent too. So, but then the other guy was negligent. So generally when there's negligence, there's going to be some sort of settled arrangement with the court. So I would assume damages are possible, but I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. I don't know anything. But um, I, I just, I feel bad. I mean, people are like, oh, she can sue and get $2 million. Like, I would think most people that suffer from, like, limited mobility and, like, chronic pain for the rest of their life, honestly, as strange as it might sound, would rather not have the $2 million and just not have a broken ass. To me. You know, no amount of money can take away, like, nerve damage and paralysis, but that's just me. <laughs> 